Hello, my name's Relevant. This is Do All The Things. Welcome to the show. Today, another pickup swap. I just did two in a row. This is gonna be three in a row, at least filming. Don't know how, what order I'm gonna place these in. Ah, uh, this is my Ibanez XL Baritone. It's tuned to B, standard B, but it feels like you're playing a guitar with regular strings tuned to E. And I'm doing more pickup swapping on it because, you know, I haven't always been happy with the flavors I get out of this thing. Basswood, ugh. Why you no alder? harmonic as I'd like it to be. Harmonics are a big part of my style. If I can't pull those pinch harmonics just like exploding off the fretboard, I, I, I feel a bit disappointed. <laughs> At least the crunch is there. It doesn't sound too bad with this amp. Great Blue Voodoo 60 combo. Where we last left off, I've, I've, I've worked on this guitar. I probably have a couple videos about it now. Hell, I think it was my first guitar video I posted. It's doing a setup on the Floyd. But you know, I've changed a few things on this. I did uh, some pickup swapping on it before. Tried the PAF Pro, the Deactivator, the Fred, and I ended up settling on the Super 3. And that was uh, upgrading from EMGs. I had EMGs in this for the longest time, but I wanted to try taking a more passive approach. I currently have an EMG 89 in the neck and it's full neck, single mode, bridge. That gives me the tonal range that I want. But yeah, a couple more pickups to try in this. I'm curious what happens if I go full out puff on this one. So I have a Duncan 59 here. Huh, I wonder how that's gonna work. I just installed the JB that matches this into a buddy's guitar. I know the JB would probably be good in this. It's ultimately what I should probably be putting in there. But what would a 59 be like? Hmm. Otherwise, pearly gates. Not a pickup you usually associate with metal. I heard that there is one metal band that uses these. Uh, the guy's name is Gates. People think this is his signature pickup. No, the Pearly Gates is an OG Seymour Duncan model. It's been around for decades now. Never tried one. I'm gonna try one this time. Unfortunately, it's not T-spaced or F-spaced, but I found in practice, even if the pull pieces don't line up perfectly, uh, it's good enough. I feel like my screwdriver's due for a charge, bud. Oh, this is a guitar that's at risk of getting overworked. All my guitars are. I've done so many pickup swaps. It's just flavor of the month with me in these things. do not look too bad, but we still, we have to be careful. This appears to be the DiMarzio right here. At least it's out front center here. We can uh, take it apart relatively easy. It's the soldering to pots that I irk about. Cause you're taking, you're taking life off them when you do. When you're not using coil tapping or anything fancy like that. Disconnecting a pickup is really straightforward. And if you haven't seen this trick with Floyd yet, don't even have to loosen the strings on most of my guitars anyway. All technique, bud, all technique. When you do a lot of swaps, your quarter screws start to get pretty loose. Whoop. Now let's spar with these damn slots for the next little while. <laughs> The Super 3 is a pickup I did not expect to like in this guitar. I don't think I ever tried it. Usually it's pretty dark and you don't want it in a dark or muddy sounding guitar. It's really not bad, not perfect, but it's not bad in this guitar. But then there's no sound that I found in this guitar so far that's perfect. It just has a weird aura about it like that. All right, DP152. I am going to start this party with the pearly gates. Or should I start with the puff? I don't expect to like the path in this, but last time that happened. Yeah, whatever, we're gonna start with the pearly gates. Now we're gonna start with the path. Now, uh, how do we wanna orient this? <laughs> you know, usually these pull pieces, they go towards the uh, the rear. And then we would we would have the, the logo upside down, which looks funny. I don't know, let's try it with pull pieces upwards. And I suppose we can like switch it around after and see if that makes a difference. I swear I had a faster, better way of doing this. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's better. So tedious. I, oh, yeah, this, this hole's loose here. Stripped, bud. 
That one's good. Oi, wanka. Oh, pretty good, bud. Looks funny though. I'm gonna set our height here. Hey, uh-oh. Okay, let's get it wired up to see what it's gonna sound like, man. Now working with uh, wires like this is interesting. For one, they're thick. And for two, they have an over-exaggerated ground plane. You can pretty much just tin the shield wherever you want and tack it down. That should do. Key term should. Don't really need to uh, bother with the cover or the battery for where we're going. But this should work now. Let's see those flavors. Yeah, EMGs still have some output without a battery. All right, let's check out them path tones, but... I think I like it. Less saturation, right? Where I don't want there to be saturation. Huh. Little bit less fuzz on the uh, fast uh, shucking there, but uh, we can make that up for that in, in the other rigs. The touch sensitivity is there though. I don't have to hammer at it. Definitely has crunch. <laughs> Harmonics are there. Uh, I feel like it could use just a little bit more. <laughs> That's actually pretty fire. If this pearly gates doesn't impress me more, I think, I think this 59 is gonna overtake the Super 3. And I'm actually thinking of trying the uh, DiMarzio DP223. It's the uh, 36th anniversary path. So if it's anything like this, it's supposed to be a bit hotter. I think I'm gonna be happy with it in this guitar. Getting that thicky thick wire out of there is gonna be tricky now. Pearly Gates, country fried, Les Paul style guitar to a classic rock outlaw. Captures the mo mojo of the original neck pickups from Billy Gibbonson's 1959 Les Paul. It's a path with unique tonal variations. Cuts through with stronger tailored mids, okay. Open airy treble attack, I like that. El Nico too. Oh, huh. Warm spongy low end, don't know if I like that. Billy Gibbons, Texas sizzle. Okay, Texas sizzle. Now if only I knew some ZZ Top riffs. 8.2K. 
So both the 59 and the pearly gates are 8.2K in the bridge position, according to uh, Seymour Duncan Online here, which I don't have screen capture on. However, the 59 neck, which is what we were using here, 7.6. Whoa. And I did have the pull pieces oriented that way. I wonder how much that affects things. Like, as far as I know, the coils are both a little bit different, so you definitely have some effect. Maybe I should experiment with that more. All righty, the gates are going in. This talk of Texas sizzle makes me want fried chicken. But Texas is more of a beef state, isn't it? Get in there. Ow! Now, in the world of Seymour Duncan, our stock wiring is going to be green and shield to ground. Red and white get tied together. That links the coils. And black is our positive. Now I got ZZ Top stuck in my head. Except in the form of a guinea pig. Weep, weep, weep. Oh, my brain. And I know a Seymour Duncan definitely needs the impedance of the pot weighing it down. Which is why I have a 470k resistor in here simulating the pot in the position where I don't use volume on my bridge. Don't care for it. All right, the Billy Gates is in there. <laughs> Billy Gates. Billy Goats Crunch. That's my tuning. So what's this like? I'm missing out on some harmonics here. Hmm. I almost want to say the 59 was more harmonic. Let's actually try lowering it a bit. I have it about as high as it can go. Definitely has more saturated crunch, like more whoosh, 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 but it doesn't sound too thick. I think I can hear that airiness in it. I feel like that pickup has to come back up. Just a touch. Just a touch. Pull piece alignment is off though, which I find suspicious. <laughs> Okay, based on recent events, there is a question that I would like to answer. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, just, you know, pop, 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 screw, 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 screw. And we're gonna go like this, and we're gonna go like this, and we're gonna go like this. Now our pickup ring is gonna sit a bit wonky, but we're just trying to make an example of things here. Hmm. Yeah. If the tone is affected, it might be affected by how that pickup's sitting now with the ring backwards and the slight can't. But I'm sure this can't can.
Okay, I feel like there's more and more harmonic. Now, is that because of the position of the pickup or the actual pull pieces? Because like I said, see that, you know, it's, it's kind of weird now. So that coil is a little bit closer. And maybe the difference between distance can, well, it's definitely gonna affect the tone to some margin. Well, there's only one thing to do. I'm gonna have fun getting those springs back into place, aren't I? All right, let's flip this around. How about a little bit of alignment here, bud? What is going on down there? Yeah, it was fun. All right, back in there, different position. You know what? It pretty much does the same thing, except with the other pull pieces like that. So. Yeah, it sounds more crunchy now. Come on, surely changing the distance is not making that big of a difference. Well, I think I'm gonna put this guy back together, call it good for now. I wanna taste test this pickup on my other rigs. And you know, I can flip it to and fro without much effort. Or, you know, didn't seem like it was much effort, but that's interesting though. I, I, I feel like I prefer the sound of it like this. Much of the same qualities that I was liking with this guy in backwards. So, you know, there's no hard fast rule of which way stuff has to be done, especially with pickups, you know? You can adjust the height, you can adjust the pull pieces. You know, we got some cant here now. We could probably bring those pull pieces up to match it, except for the fact that they're very tightly waxed in there. They don't want to turn. That's fine, we'll leave them alone. But, you know, I'm gonna stew on this for a bit. I'm gonna play on this. I'm gonna try it in my different rigs. Maybe you'll see me again about this, maybe you won't. I don't know. Might try the 59 again. We'll see, we'll see. I'm thinking if I like that 59 in this one as much as I did, I have an idea. Maybe I would like to try the 223 in this. So yeah, you might yet see me again with this guitar. So if you like it, stay tuned and find out. Otherwise, I might be doing some other works on guitars or amps or pedals, or I might be fixing my string trimmer, or maybe I'm gonna build a computer. You never know with me, buds. You never know. And the camera battery just died. So definitely, yeah. Where's your crab? Yeah, it's just a crab. Right there.
maybe like... <laughs> no, none of these look like a crab. Why am I even thinking that this looks anything like a crab? <laughs>